live from Pine Top, Arizona. It's That Painting Show. Hi folks, I'm Beth Zink. Welcome to our mountain studio. We're up here in Pine Top today and uh, we're gonna do day three of that painting show. This is where we were in day two. We'd done the clouds, we'd gotten the mountains roughed in and the foreground of the painting. And it's time to move on. So every day we have our email inbox checked and we choose the question of the day. Dr. John, who is today's lucky duck? Today's lucky duck is Jeannie from North Carolina. Whoa, okay, Jeannie. What does Jeannie ask? She said, hey Beth, I'm following along with your painting. Can you continue and finish it? Well, Jeannie, I'll try. Probably not today. We'll probably uh, work on another day or two. But if you want to email, this is the email address. Thanks, Ducky. This is the painting we're working from. It's one I did a few years ago. It's called Meadow Gold. And I thought what I'd do to help you work you through the, the rest of the painting is that I would do one side of it, complete one, or almost complete one side of it, so that you can see where we're going, where we are, and where we're going. So, here we go. I'm going to work, as I said, top to bottom, left to right, and back to front. First thing I'm going to do is I'm working on these mountains. See how much more detail I have in those over there. Whoops, forgot to get out of the paint. <laughs> no worries, it's right here. I need purple and burnt sienna. I like to use a little burnt sienna in with my purple because it kind of um, gives a little earthier tone. A little bit of white, purple, and burnt sienna. And I'm going to put my highlights on the side. Actually, I have decided we're going to have the sun come from this side. So the highlights are on that side of each mountain. And I'm going to have that continue all the way across, making this mountain lighter on this side. And even the ones in the back. Actually, the ones in the back should be even lighter farther away. This is the dark side. The highlights only come halfway. So make sure that you think of it about halfway over and have this be the darker area of your mountain. This is the dark side. I'm using real short kind of directional strokes. That helps you get the sense that mountains are made of rocks. They have ridges that follow down. So you want to kind of just have your strokes follow the contour of the mountain itself. And also down at the bottom is a little bit darker where there's not as much sunshine. Okay, so now I have this mountain a little bit more in keeping with the ones on the right. It's not quite light enough, just add a little bit more white. You know, uh, acrylic paint dries slightly darker. So when you apply the paint, you're, you might think it's going to be real light, but then as it dries, it darkens. We're also going to put the dark side on this side of this mountain. And this one too. Okay, I'll leave that line there just so you see where I'm going. Next, considering going back to front, we're going to be working on these distant trees. Farther away any object is, the lighter in color and smaller it gets. So we're going to have, even though these just look like little blobs of color, they're actually 
full-size trees with trunks and all that. It's just that we can't see them. This might blend a little because my other paint isn't quite dry. You let it dry first. Don't do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> So that is that band of trees along the back. Maybe I'm going to make some a little bit taller. Remember our light's coming from the left, so our shadows, see how each one of these is kind of a domed form? So our, they're really, you know how trees kind of have a rounded top canopy. I'm going to have the dark side on the left side of each of those little rounded forms. That kind of looks like trees off in the distance. I'll add a little shadow a little bit later. This photograph that I worked from was taken in the summer, late spring, when the all the meadows in the mountains in the desert were covered with poppies, yellows and oranges, and from a distance, all you could see was bands of color. So what we're going to do in the back here is we're just going to make bands of color. When we get up to the foreground, we're going to put in lots more detail. But for now, just these kind of, it's kind of like stripes, but you don't want them to be exactly the same. As randomly as you can. And then when we get down into the foreground, We'll mix in a little bit of green because every flower has a plant underneath it. Blend in a little bit of green. While the paint is wet, it won't be quite so obvious. I think that's about as far as we can go today. So let me just say, I hope this was helpful. We'll work on it again tomorrow, maybe even the next day. We'll put in all the detail. I'll show you which brushes to use. It'll be a lot of fun. Remember, we have our uh, super sale going on. And uh, our super sale it com is comprised of the 25% off Clays and also our pillows. Now that we're up in the mountains, I remembered we have mountain pillows, not just desert pillows. So I'll add these to the website. And in closing, today's Pearls of Wisdom. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Stay well. Cheers.